Hi, I'm Jerry Patch, the resident dramaturg at South Coast Preparatory and the adapter of Christmas Carol. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you want to know more about South Coast Rep, A Christmas Carol, stay tuned. Well, I've, I've been asked about, you know, adapting A Christmas Carol, and, and the most honest answer I could give is a gorilla could adapt that story. <laughs> it's such a good story. It's almost impossible to screw it up. But uh, uh, David and Martin decided that they, you know, wanted to have a production of A Christmas Carol because there wasn't one in Orange County. And uh, so I was asked to do an adaptation of it. And, uh, I, you know, I'd read my Dickens and, and, and whatnot. Uh, and I came up with a draft one summer, essentially. It was, uh, I was living in Huntington Beach, about 400 yards from the beach. And, and I would get up at five in the morning before my kids got up and, you know, sit down and try to put myself in foggy London and, you know, at Christmas time and uh, uh, write it there. And it, it actually was fairly, fairly easy because as these things go, Dickens has given you everything. You don't really need anything other than what he's got in the story. So now it's a matter of what are the lines going to be? What are the characters going to say to one another? How is it going to evolve? But the redemption of Scrooge is the action of the play. And, and you just, you know, go through with that. So, uh, and then having written a draft of it, uh, I'd spent literally years with John David Keller, the director, and Hal Landon, who was playing Scrooge you know, talking it through, talking it over, and we would refine it. I mean, I don't think we ever did the same script twice. Uh, you know, we made changes. There were certain scenes that we changed every year <laughs> until we felt like, okay, this is as close as we're going to get, uh, that kind of a thing. But you you never want to sit, you know, and, and, and go... Um, you know, we're done on any kind of a production. You, you, you keep working, you keep trying to make it better. And this year is very interesting because uh, we have a new director. He's a Takakua who uh, had always been the assistant director on it and, and mainly the Wrangler and, and director of the children that are in the show. And he says, very good, Smith College, incredibly bright woman. So I'm eager to see what she's done with it and what Richard Doyle will do with Scrooge. And Doyle's perspective is interesting to me because I had this theory that if you were an actor and you watched another actor play a part, that you inevitably would be thinking, yep, yep, no, 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 I wouldn't do that, you know, something else. And I asked Richard, I said, you know, you've you've been half the parts in the play and now you're playing Scrooge. And he said, oh, yeah, I have some ideas. <laughs> so I think it's, you, you know, he comes sort of like semi-loaded, if you will, into the first rehearsal because he's had so much experience with the play. And, it, you know, it's going to be interesting to, to see what he as an artist brings to it that's different and new. So there are Christmas carols, you know, to be had other than ours. And I think what we've always tried to do is, is to do one for our community, for Orange County. Uh, and part of that has to do with the fact that we're using uh, children who are, you know, enrolled in our conservatory, who audition for the show and are picked because they're good enough to do it. And uh, this is, is meaningful in the sense that, you know, they go to school, they have schoolmates and they're, they're, they're classmates and their classmates, parents, and other people come to see the show. There are people, uh, this is the 41st year of A Christmas Carol. And I, I, uh, I mean, that dates me, certainly. But uh, uh, there are people who've seen every one of them. So it is like a church service, in a way. It's kind of like a secular service. And, and I think we do that principally for the community. I mean, the, 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 the myth in, in uh, or the cynical view, uh, uh, particularly from critics who, oh, my God, not another Christmas carol, you know, this kind of a thing, is that you're just doing it for the money. Well, the money is nice, but no, the reason you do it is the community wants it. They, they, they use it to celebrate their Christmas. And so uh, we've been lucky enough to be tasked with coming up with one. And, uh, uh, you know, it's going very well for us. So, uh, as I say, this is going to be a, a different kind of a year because of the changes we're making. But uh, uh, 
you know, it's still going to be the same story that Charles Dickens told. And, uh, you know, Dickens, by the way, if, if people don't know, uh, performed this himself. Uh, Jefferson Mays did a Christmas Carol at the uh, uh, Geffen Theater last year all by himself, a one-man show, and played all the characters. And Dickens used to do that. And he would come to the United States and make a great deal of money uh, touring, playing all of the Christmas Carol himself. First of all, it's, it's quite musical. Um, a friend of mine, Dennis McCarthy, who was in the, the Motion Picture Academy's Composers Hall of Fame, uh, Dennis was... Uh, well, first of all, I've known Dennis since he was nine years old and I was 11. And, and uh, Dennis, as a teenager, played keyboards for the Beach Boys and the Hondells and some other people. If, if they couldn't get Leon Russell in a session, Dennis got hired. And then he became Glenn Campbell's music director when Glenn started out. And, uh, and then he uh, wound up, after a series of media assignments, uh, writing... Uh, as the uh, principal composer for the Star Trek television series. And he worked on that for 18 years. And uh, so Dennis is, you know, a very talented composer. So he took uh, a lot of traditional songs and, and blended them, made pastiches, musical pastiches of, out of them. And it, there's a terrific score to this, this play, which uh, Dennis created several years ago that we use. Uh, so I think if you come to our carol, that's one thing you're going to get. And the other is, as I say, uh, not everybody uses children, uh, certainly not to the extent that we do. And it's, uh, it's really kind of nice to see, uh, you know, that number of young people up on a stage, as well as a number of years ago now, we, we went to a complete diverse casting. So we don't, uh, two things we don't do. It, it's just not all white people by any means. And second, uh, the, uh, what is the second? It just popped out. Oh yeah, we don't do the dialects. Uh, one of the things that we felt made it more accessible to more people who might not be uh, accustomed to going to the theater is to do the show simply in general American dialect. And, uh, uh, you know, some people say, well, they're in London. Yeah. And if you watch an Ibsen play in London, they all have British dialects, even though all those characters are in Norway. So, I mean, I mean if, if it's good literature, you, you, you don't need to do it in dialects. So uh, I, we think it's more accessible. I, I know when I go to London and listen to plays, it takes me five minutes just to get my ears tuned. And I'm very used to it to once again, listening to British actors. So uh, I would say what's different about ours, aside from the fact that we've worked on it for a long time and I hope refined it, is uh, the music that we bring to it, the children we bring to it and the accessibility. Hi everybody, I'm uh, Jerry Patch. I'm the resident dramaturg at South Coast Preparatory uh, and also the adapter of A Christmas Carol. It's a show that has been running for 41 years, so we must be doing something right. And if you haven't seen it, by all means, come and check us out this year. It's, it's certainly worth your time and a great way to celebrate the holidays. And if you have seen it, come on back. You know, we miss you.